Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm just base coating. Um, Allie had mentioned in um, my live yesterday that painting furniture and <clears throat> decorative painting, I just wanted to, I figured I'd turn the camera on. I'm just base coating, and when I say base coating, I mean prepping the wood. Actually, I'm prepping. I'm not base coating. I'm prepping the surface. So I have my all-purpose sealer out, and it comes in all shapes and forms. You can use gesso. You can use anything that's going to um, make a barrier between the surface, which is porous. So I have wood here, and these are ATCs. You want to make a barrier so that when you start to paint, your paint has some place to sit. So all I've done is put out a little puddle of the sealer and a little puddle of black because I'm working with black and I'm doing it very sloppily. I'm not um, being real precise. These are just pieces of um, balsa wood I guess that I want to practice mandalas on. I want to make some um, dream catchers I think. I like the shape of these because they have you could do a small mandala on top and then have a, have room to put a little um, feather or something um, hanging down from your dream catcher and they were in my stash anywho so I'm giving these a very like a pretty generous coat but I'm not being specific like I want to show you there are some patches that aren't opaque um, because I put more sealer than paint but the only reason I add the paint to this layer is so that my next coat is a lot more opaque so this side you can tell I have a lot more like this side's a little more opaque <coughs> but this is just the the very first coat now I'm going to do the other side of my ATC's too but before I do I'm going to sand everything so I'll come back in a second once this coat is dry and I've just put um, I've just painted the backs of some of the um, pieces that I've already done. I'm just trying to finish them, make them look finished, and I'll sign my name. Um, so I'll be back in a sec, and I'll show you how I do the actual first coat of paint. So this would be considered the, um, the sealing coat. So I'm sealing the wood. I'm prepping the surface so that... Um, see, and what happens is... The tooth of the wood comes up, and they call it the nap of the wood, the tooth of the wood. Something about the, the sealer pushes something to, to the top of the wood. I don't know the science behind it. I just know it happens because I have painted a lot of wood. So you'll just want to sand. Now this, you can tell... I did I wasn't careful and I would be um, I would be much more careful and purposeful I'm doing a bunch of these at one time and I don't really care about them they're kind of they're play I'm playing with them so if this was something I was going to display in my home I would take a lot more care a lot more see like look this just got something on it that I put it like a piece of this what had paint on it and I put it down and it got on there so just know that if I were really going to display this in my home or um, giving it away or something, I would take a lot more time and care. But for this specific use, I'm just going to do, and I'm going to do some ATC cards. So this is basically, I don't even know what it is because I just pulled it out of um, some already cut pieces. I I'm assuming it's watercolor paper. But I still sealed it, and it'll also um, give the paper a little more stiffness. I'm doing both sides just to make it look consistent and neat. So I basically just take a little sealer, take a little black, and just put it together on there. And I'm very liberally, generously putting this on. I am kind of brushing out the ridges you know, I just, just to keep it smoother. Sometimes you can't get those ridges out after, even with sanding. So it's better to do it um, with some forethought, thinking, you know, I want this to be smooth in, the, in my end game. Obviously, one side is going to be better than the other, probably. So that'll be the front, the better side. I'm trying, 
and I'm being I am so fast and rough and I could splash myself like I'm wearing a decent t-shirt I really don't want to get black paint all over it I just did my nails and they're getting black paint all over it but anyway so basically I'm just preparing the surface at the moment I'm not this isn't my finished ready to go page that I'm gonna do alright so when I come back it'll be a little more orderly and I'll show you how I actually prepare the surface to do nice artwork on so let me see if I have um, and I just use these little what are they um, deli papers just to uh, so I can throw them away instead of getting it all I mean I could be getting it all over this but anyway I'm gonna go wash up I'll be back and I'll show you how I then get the surface really nice and ready to go for um, doing a project I'll be right back all right so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay this old dish towel down this is what I use to sand on when I'm inside now I would take this outside ordinarily because sand sanding is messy and dusty um, but this way hopefully it'll catch all the dust and then I'll go like this with the, the, the towel and just shake it outside um, all right I use I have all different kinds of sandpaper like guys I am not that specific but um, you know you need to get some finer sandpaper for fine work like this is the Tim Holtz sanding block and it came with here I have it right here yay Sarah for having something this is let's see if it has the um, grit of the sandpaper on it T -t 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 designed <coughs> to use on the sanding grip let's see if it has it says abrasive sheets designed to fit the Tim Holtz sanding you know why I think it's for uh, <clears throat> distressing <coughs> I have a little itchy throat hold on it doesn't say what grit it is let's see if it says it on the back no <coughs> I'll be right back all right I think I got my throat under control all right so I have all these different ones I don't know this obviously like you can tell and it's kind of like when you file your nails you know there's like one side of the file is very hard and the other one's softer like this is super soft this says P600 and this looks like wet dry it's wet or dry because when I did resin you can you want you sand resin with when it's wet because then the little dust particles because I think they're toxic so that anyway so I have that and then this is wet dry too but it well no that seems pretty smooth now look at this this is super harsh this says P150 so maybe the lower the number the more harsh the sandpaper I'm assuming most of this is the wet dry because that's probably the last time I bought um, and for jewelry and different things like that you really want a, a fine sandpaper now this <clears throat> oh see this says fine 150 this is like a sanding um, foam thing pad and guys prep work is not my favorite I don't like prep work at all like it makes me sweaty it makes me dirty and uh, it's not fun <laughs> so but it had you should do it if you want your piece to be nice you should do the prep work so I do it and I tend to do it in a group like this like if I have a couple things that I want to prep I do it all at one time get it out of the way and then everything will be sitting ready to go when I want to get down to business so um, that's what I'm doing today so oh, look at this one this one's super um, see that's so weird this says P150 and this says just 150 it's an F 150 so and this is super harsh and this is super fine so I can't tell you what to get you're gonna have to go maybe if you ask the guys at the hardware store they would know like this says P 600 and it's the wet dry and it's super fine so but what I'm gonna do <clears throat> I'm gonna take my Tim Holtz one which is fairly rough and I think it's been used a couple times 
but I want to get the edges of these. So I'm going to take it across the edges. And it's okay if um, the paint comes completely off. Like, I mean, I kind of consider it as I'm sanding the sealer into the surface. Like it's it's getting becoming part of the surface. So I don't really, this part is all rough and I'm, I tend to be rough by nature. Um, not gentle in a, in a way and like, so I'm hard I, and I want to get it done and I'm not having fun. So I mean, but you can have fun. You can put music on and sand to the music. I don't know. This just isn't my favorite, but that I wanted to be, so I'm using the rough sandpaper for that. Then I might even take it and just gently, I'm not going hard. See if there's, see, I can see bigger pieces. <clears throat> well, I don't want to zoom in. But like along the edges, some of the side wood came over the edge. So I'm just going to go a little hard on that. On both sides. It's not, this sanding block is nice. And those of you, I mean, I'll bet you all have one of these from, um, what is that store? Oh man, I have no brain. Tuesday morning, probably all got one of these on clearance. So that's feeling so much better already. There's still a little bit of, um, oh, right here. I didn't get this part. So I will go around to all my pieces and get off all the, now let me show you, okay, so this is the paper. This is paper. And I've never actually sanded paper, but I was so clumpy. I'm just giving that a little sand. <clears throat> it kind of, the um, sealer leaves a little bit of a shininess to it. So you can kind of just take the shine down. But see, I was very gloppy. So I can see ridges and everything, but I will do a second coat. I'm going to show you what I do. And then it's going to be ready for action. So this is smooth now. Um, what else do I have? So I have these. I wanted to show you one thing specifically. Okay, this one has, you can see, there you go. This is the, what is that called? The wood grain, right? And it's, if you had feel-a-vision, you could feel that. It's totally sticking up. I don't even think I prepped this side. This side was already painted when I did the back. All right, so I'm just going to take it and go against the grain or in circles. I don't know. I'm not a woodworker, but man, that is already feeling so good now. So all you want to make sure is that the surface is all one level. And you can go around your sides too because sometimes the, the paint kind of collects on the side a little. Whatever. I don't know what I'm saying. The words don't match my thought. But I'm just going to say on both sides. Alright, so you get that kind of dull looking finish now. Oh, but it's smooth. All right, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and sand these down, and then I'll come back and show you the, like, the top coat, we'll call it, right? So it would be, hmm, I guess this is called um, prepping the wood. And then, see, I have to sand the backs of these. Let me see if I can use, no, I like using this sanding block. So I would, this is not that harsh of a sandpaper for this part, but maybe for the fine sanding. Um, yeah, you're going to need a piece of fine. But this is good for uh, getting the tooth down, the tooth that comes back up from uh, the sealer. Ooh, that's nice and smooth. But I'm not done yet because that doesn't look right, right? Like now I've taken off some and... But I feel like I just like... Um, and sanding the sealer right into the wood so that it becomes part of it and you won't have any issue. Because like these are mandala, like if these are um, kind of 
spiritual in nature or healing in nature. You want it to feel good too, right? You would like you can feel the bumps because I put top dots on here and then like you don't want to have a snaggle on the side, you know? So anyway, I'll go away, come back and show you the finishing coat that I do. Okay, man, it is hot, guys. Ugh. I just got, I had to put my other fan on. I'm so hot from sanding that. Yikes. All right, so now everything's smooth and sealed. So this wood is not porous anymore. Well, I'm no scientist, but that's, in theory, it's not, right? And I've taken off all the ridges and kind of gotten it to where I'd like it to be. So I put out some black acrylic paint. This is just Americana. Ebony Black by DecoArt. It's acrylic paint. Craft paint. I have a beat up old, what is this? I don't even know. It's falling apart, but it's like a nice-ish flat brush. I have some nice bristle. And I'm going to put water in my brush first. And then I'm going to blot it out. But I want the bristles to be moist. Because you still, you don't want this to be gloppy. You want it to be smooth, right? So here's the side. I'll come in on this a little bit. If I could figure out my... So see all... Look, you can see the before, what it looks like. It has shine to it. There are some patchy places. So I'm just going to put a nice... I'm going to slow down now. And I really... Because this is going to be my finished piece ready to paint. And I mean... Sometimes it might need one more coat, depending on the color you're using. It may not be as opaque, but black is really good. I'll be able to get this nice and opaque and smooth. And I go back over one more time, and I'm going to let that dry. And I'll come back and get the sides eventually, or maybe now, just with a little bit less paint on my brush. Because I just don't want to make a ridge come up over the edge. So I'm just going to let it dry. Let me set it down. Now this one, this is going to be a good example. Oh my gosh. So I went crazy sanding this one. And I actually like took off some of the straightness of the edges because I was so rough. So this one I was a little more gentle. It's a little more square. But you can see the shine of the sealer. And I mean, you can seal this just by putting a coat of sealer on it. But I always mix the paint because it just saves me doing two coats of paint. That's my theory. Anyway, all right, so am I too zoomed in now? A little bit more water in my brush, just a tiny bit, and I'm mixing a little bit of water into this so that it's not too gloppy. And I'm going to just really be all in one direction. I stay in one direction. You can go back and forth because I get impatient but look at that how smooth no ridges and it's thin it's not gloppy I'm gonna turn it around and hold it look paints falling off the brush that's from when you leave your brushes in in a water bucket the water seeps up through into the wood and um, ruins them so don't do that but I do it all the time So just thin coat, just t making sure that it's slick. If it starts to like not move, add a little bit of water to your brush and get it to move. And then I'm kind of picking up the pressure and lightly fixing all those ridges. I mean, I don't love that I went halfway. I would actually finish it like that. Now because this is a craft, like it's a little cutesy craft project, it's not a piece of furniture. If you're doing furniture, just go one section at a time and get that nice flow, get yourself a nice brush, a nice paint brush. The guys at Home Depot probably know better if you if you tell them that you're doing a, um, a furniture project you know, there are specific brushes out there for that. So um, let me see what I could show you. Okay, this is um, one of the ATCs. So it's paper. I think, I assume it's watercolor paper. Like I said, it was um, already cut and prepped. 
so I just wanted to um, so but you can see that shine and all the ridgy looking you know but if you take your brush and you have a little bit of water make a nice slick and I'm just gonna hold it over here so basically you would want to go from top to bottom and I rush see I'm not slow I can't help it I don't know why I actually could be if I wanted to but like I said this is not fun for me I don't get any joy I kinda do because I want it to look nice for when I start painting but that's the only joy I get the knowing that it's going to be good and I don't want to really put a fingerprint on here but I'm just going to and see how it's even I'll show you them when they're dry I'll do one more piece what haven't I done yet I did a big one let's do one of these little disc ones look at that so this has a bunch of lines and all different stuff going on I'm going to load my brush in a little bit of slick wetter paint and I actually do feel myself kind of pushing the paint onto the surface too I'm not just laying it on and that's just me being rough probably but I would always go with two thin coats versus one thick coat that's just how I like it and it it just I don't know it looks so good and then before I start to paint I'm even going to sand it one more time it depends sometimes I will sometimes I won't but I got in the habit of this from decorative painting um, having such a smooth surface man it's really easy to do the techniques the floating technique is super easy when you have a nice smooth surface so that's basically it and I can still see some ridges shining through there because I was obviously I was really not doing it as perfect as I could be um, all right so I'm gonna do all these and I'll be right back if you're working on a smaller surface I just want to say I always put the paint down in the center and work my way out toward the edges because then you won't get the clumps along the edge and it's just easier to smooth everything out that way so I put it down in the middle and work my way towards the edges oops and you lose can't hold it but anyway and then you can always just lightly connect it all together so again here's another disc if I'm doing this I'm gonna take I'm gonna load my brush up and put it down in the middle area and then push the paint towards the outside edge and as you do that you clean up all your ridges and your bumps so I'm gonna get some more paint and put it down kind of towards the middle and then work the paint towards the edge and that way you're gonna come away with a much smoother surface and just kind of clean it up like that see no ridges um, so yeah doing these little circular ones was kind of nice because I I just kept turning the piece so I thought so I just put it down kind of no it more in the middle not right on the edge and then push your brush like I kind of go off the edge with my brush and it avoids getting paint caught on the edge of the piece and creating a big glop there see I, it's not moving I can tell my brush is getting dry I mean I have plenty and then I get a little bit lazy and sloppy but always make sure that the paint moves and so I just t got a tiny bit of water and put it on my brush and just so that the paint can move there's a little ridge on the edge there that I can see but that's the back so I'm not really that concerned I'm just gonna um, sign my name alright so I just wanted to show you that now this one I had already done a project on so you can kind of see the blue shining through there a little purple and um, I sanded it off and sometimes 
that can cause bumps like if I didn't I can still I can see no it's pretty flat my husband has a really good sander in the basement so I took it down there and I like G -g -g -g, so it got it pretty pretty flat but um, like let's do this side this is actually a matte black paint so depending on if you're using a satin or uh, what other kinds are there satin or um, I have some and I can't even think of it you know there's going to be a different shine depending on the paint uh, finish the finish of the paint but this is just a flat black so it'll dry much more flat without a lot of shine to it but there you go all right so I'll be back when this is dry all right so everything's dry I did both sides well some of them I only had to do one side let me open this up my dirty old I already shook it once but I'm gonna get so this is one sided I just don't know if you'll be able to tell but before okay so these are done but I have my super duper fine sandpaper now so this is two coats let me zoom in and it's a matte paint I think I mean it's still even the paint brings up the tooth of the wood it's kind of interesting but this isn't I mean you can even hear it you hear that like there is some tooth to it so I'm gonna take this super fine sandpaper I don't know if it's called super fine I just am considering it and gently now that is smooth and it it definitely took a little bit of the like I can't like the blackness off but if I'm looking at them it looks fine it maybe it looks and then I don't know but I that's what I do when I'm gonna first start painting something and in decorative painting if I were gonna put a um, pattern on here you would trace it on with graphite paper but this is so smooth and I consider it done so that's how I finish a piece so this is just both sides are painted and it's a little bit it's toothy that's the only way I can describe it but I'm taking this super fine sandpaper I'm not pressing too hard just kind of letting the weight of my hand actually oh man that is smooth and this is not so I'm just gonna do the same thing so it's basically just like the weight of my hand gently as gentle as Sarah can be because she's not a gentle crafter and you can do the little edges but that is super smooth now it's like a blanket it's like sateen sheets all right so that is how you prep I would say now like these are um, ATC's let me just do this real quick too I think when the paint dries it just has maybe a matte finish to it maybe that's exactly what it is the, the finish of the paint but maybe if it had a satin finish or a gloss finish it wouldn't be that way but oh man and I mean you can see like it's I've taken something off of there so it's not the same color but it will be and you know what happens if I take like a, these are wet wipes they're not wet wet they're kind of and I'm just gonna put moisture on it and see what happens because it kind of brings the color back and it dries pretty fast but I want to see if it brings the tooth back too maybe it's moisture that brings it back nope it's smooth but it kind of takes off that sandpapery look to it like the the dryness I don't know anyway 
have fun. It's not the funnest part, but man, that's smooth. And this is ready to go. So these are waiting and ready for me to just take color out now. I, I think I'm going to go in my um, art journal and I want to play with some color because this was so boring, all the black paint. But I hope you understand it now. And now this surface is ready. You could trace a pattern on here with graphite paper and then start painting it in. But if you were going to finish this, like if it was a piece of furniture, then you would use a varnish. And I would apply the varnish in the same way. Just thin, smooth coats. And you can do two or three coats. You don't have to do one gloppy coat. And let it fully dry. And then do a second thin coat of varnish. And then you're good. All right, you guys. Allie, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.